wearing underwear, by the way. I am not. Uh, <laughs> but I am wearing a bra. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to Ring the Bell. This is DS. I'm here with the most iconic, the cat. Stacey oh, my gosh. <laughs> Love your hair, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I have to. So amazing. <laughs> Let's talk about the wig for a little bit. What was your whole thing with the wig? And what was your favorite wig? I loved the colored wigs, honestly. I loved doing the colored wigs. I don't know. It was just fun. Um, my hair was kind of short, and I was done with the black wig stuff. And so, I don't know. I just started uh, matching my outfits to the different wigs that I would wear. And so, it just became, it just kind of snowballed. It just it? became a little fun. And the blue one was on the game. Yes, yes. The blue one is in the game. I mean, you were so memorable and iconic diva. There's so many amazing oh, moments. Please. To think about. I want to talk about though. You were in a record book. You were a formal WWF Women's Champion. Okay. I want to know about how that match came about. The swimming pool four-way Women's Championship match. How that come about? Um, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> you know, they just come to us and they tell us what's gonna happen. Okay. But, but I mean, it was really fun. It was. They were just trying to do stuff that was kind of edgy right. and not the normal thing for the girls. I think we were kind of gearing towards 18 to 35 year old men back then. It was just something fun and silly and it off is, the yeah. cuff to do, you know? When you learned that you're going to be a champion that day, how did you react? What? <laughs> Me? I, I don't wrestle. <laughs> I don't wear underwear. I don't wear underwear! I don't wear underwear either. I am wearing underwear, by the way. I am not. <laughs> Some things just don't change. But I am wearing a bra. Okay. Are you wearing your bra today? Unfortunately not. Okay. So we're in the same boat like that. <laughs> We're just opposites. We're the opposite, yeah. <laughs> How did the locker room take the fact that you would be a champion? I don't think it was uh, very important to many people, except Ivory. She's, oh. it was, being the women's champion and being women's wrestling was very serious to her. Right. And so the slapstick kind of stuff, the fun stuff, the pudding matches, the, right. the, the swimming pool matches, the gravy, you know, we right, did the right, Thanksgiving right. and gravy and all that kind of stuff. That just wasn't her forte. You liked it, right? I loved it, yeah. I loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. So we also have to talk about how you lost the title that is equally memorable because her... The snow Bunny. Harvina. Yeah, Harvina. Downtown Bruno is uh, what I knew him by back in the Memphis era okay. when we did that. Again, they just tell you what's going to happen, like, the day of, and then you kind of go over it. But... Honest, honestly, I'm gonna be completely honest with everybody. Back then we had to carry the belts around everywhere we went. So we'd have to go through, we'd have to carry it on through security and I'm like, please, someone else carry this for me now because I'm tired of it, you know, because I'm tired of it. No, but it was, it was so much fun and it was, you know, a really fun time in my life and I'm so glad I got the opportunity to do it, get to experience the things that I got to experience back then. You didn't have necessarily an issue with a man taking women's title? No. 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 I mean, it's wrestling. Real life, they're not doing it. I'll fight for that sucker. <laughs> Early on, you were doing more fun matches, gimmick matches. But when we saw your match in like 2001, things were different. Yes. You were doing like real wrestling moves. Like, were you yes. training to be a wrestler? I was. Well, I wasn't training to be a wrestler. I was training to wrestle a certain match. Okay. So, like the um, arm wrestling that I did with Terry. Okay. So, we would do house shows and practice that. And we'd go over it and practice and, and have a few matches. And then we went and did it in the UK. And then we did it. We did one here too, I think. But... It was more of, like, like I'll, I'll say again, I'm not, I'm not a wrestler. I was not a wrestler. I learned how to do wrestling spots okay. to get a match to, 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 pour, to okay. perform a match. Yeah. So, um, like the whole stuff with Ivory, and um, we're getting pretty serious about that stuff. At that time, Memphis Wrestling had was the like the AAA for mm -hmm. WWF. So you come down to Power Pro Wrestling, and so there was a lot of a lot of trainers and stuff like that. So I lived in Memphis. It was Jerry, my ex-husband's. Um, Organization, so. Oh, Wait a minute, what do we got here? I started practicing with the guys that were that were there to learn, like with uh, the Charlie Hosses and. Um, oh, right, right, right. And you trained with Victoria. Yes, I did. She and I had some really fun matches together, and she taught me a lot because, um, you know, she knew a lot more about wrestling than I did. And so, yes, yeah, she was in the training as well, and so we would do matches together, That's and we great. would learn together, basically. One of my favorite storylines. I mean, it didn't really pan out, but right to censor versus right to nudity. Yes, that was gonna be fun. You have to have Vince McMahon. We got to the 
the building that day, one o'clock in the afternoon, you get there at one, and um, they tell you what you're going to do when they come out of their writer's meeting. They tell you what you're going to do, and I had like five or six different things going on that day. Like, you're going to do this vignette here, you're going to do this, and you're going to do that. And then Jerry took off and went shopping, which he always does. I was getting um, ready, and then Jerry came and knocked on the door and said, you got to go, we got to go. And I go, why? He goes, get your stuff. And I was like, no, I got all the stuff to get ready. I got to get ready. I got all the stuff to do. Your guess is as good as mine. Okay. I still don't have the answer. I, to this day, I don't have the answer. Some people think they know the answer, but Vince McMahon's the only one that can answer that. Did you have any idea where the right to censor versus right to nudity was going? Yeah. It was going to go in the direction of, you know, they, ha they had to... Um, force me like Jerry and the and the matches and all that kind of stuff and so I think we were going to head down the path of that um, I was maybe going to turn Ooh. and they were going to like brainwash me it was going to be kind of like wait what yeah that would have been so good I know it would have been fun we should make that happen somewhere we should let's just do it here oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was ask, are you still right to nudity Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I'm right to anything you want to do, as long as it doesn't hurt the, another person. You're good. 2022 is on your side. Yes, it Let's is. Let's be honest. <laughs> I want to briefly talk about your alliance with China. How okay. was that relationship like? That was awesome. Um, she and I were really good friends. Um, back before I signed with them, Jerry was there already. And so I would go to the shows. Like if we went to Florida, if we went to Dallas, if we went to New York, uh, or any of those places, I would go. So I already knew everyone before before I signed. And so she and I would hang out backstage in, in the locker room. She'd like invite me to come and hang out in the locker room and stuff like that. And so um, once uh, the whole Jeff thing went down, you know, she, she uh, wrestled Jeff for the intercom title and all that and then he was one day past his contract oh. so he held everyone up um, and so we didn't have a clue of what we were gonna do like she and I like what the storylines got to end right now I don't know what's happening and so Jeff finally shows up at the end of the day and um, we went over a match really fast and then we didn't know what what she and I were gonna do like there was nothing left for me so she came up with the idea of whenever you, uh, I leave and I walk back up the ramp to leave. She said, "You just, you just follow me, and you, and you turn around and kind of like give him the thing." And everybody loved it. So that's how our little mini me thing I came love to that. fruition. That's I know. So, it was so cute. Much fun. The famous reveal at the swimming pool match after the oh. championship celebration. Do you know that I am responsible for the end for nudity on every pay per view since that night? <laughs> I mean, did you know that was going to happen? Did you know it was going to be yes. broadcasted? No, 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 no. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. So we're at the very back of the building in the arena, by, by the by the stage right. where the ramp where everybody goes down, away from the ring. So what was supposed to happen was I was supposed to turn around and uh, where I did it, but the camera was supposed to be to my back. And so the, I, was, I would be like this to all the fans. Uh, and then I would do this, and only people way up in the top would see me. Um, and, okay, wow. And then Sarge was supposed to come in with a towel, and um, when I ran back and he grabbed me and he put the towel around me, I said, Sarge, did that just happen? He goes, yes, it did, kitty. <laughs> were they like, oops, or like, you think they oh, no, tricked you? I got you? a standing ovation when I went to the back. All the boys stood up, and were, everybody was cheering. <laughs> Wow, things were different back then. Yes, they were. <laughs> what do you think of that segment now that you're thinking? Oh, that thinking? would never happen now. No, no, no. Um, it's two PG-13 now, and so, um, and that's okay. I mean, that's the target audience you want to go to. But my character type isn't what they're doing now. Right, right, right. So I don't think that would ever happen again. Do you still watch wrestling now? I don't. I don't. Do you know how women's wrestling has changed? Like, there's a lot more focus on athleticism. Yes, 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 What's yes. What's your thought on how the women's wrestling evolved from where you were to now? Well, it's good on both ends. I mean, I feel like tough women, women who want to wrestle, who want to be in there, um, people like Ivory back then, that's, that's, those are my references, should be able to do that. That should, you know, that should be good because people want to see that. Mm -hmm. But people also want to see the slapstick stuff, like right. the fun stuff, like the girls pulling each other's hair and stuff like that. I'm going to pull your wig off in a minute. So you think there's still room for the cat in WWE? I think there's room for a character like that. I agree. Yeah, yeah but just you, you won't go to that extreme. What do you want to tell the fan that still love you, that still remember oh. you? Um, well, thank you guys. I really appreciate it, and I feel all the love. And thank you for having me on here. Would you like to snap my hair? Yeah. <laughs>